welcome to the video. If you want to know what pub rock is and what it wasn't, this is the video for you. Before I get into it, I'm just going to tell you I'm going to do a bonus section, it won't take long, which is me telling you the top five pub rock bands of all time. Now, I've seen practically every pub rock band that there is. I was the guy who put on bands at places like the White Line Putney, at the Cricketers at Kennington Oval, at the John Bull Chiswick, places like that. So stick with me till the end and I think you're going to like it. This video is about what pub rock was and what it wasn't. There's a load of old baloney, you're not supposed to say things like bollocks, but there's a load of old baloney about what pub rock was. I mean, don't believe anything that's seen at Wikipedia and read some of the books with a pinch of salt because a lot of it is from a particular perspective. Now, I didn't really have a particular perspective. I just been somebody who was there at the time, enjoying it, getting involved. And so I haven't really got an ax to grind. What was pub rock? Pub rock was basically bands playing in pubs. What wasn't pub rock was a genre of music, as he'll tell you in Wikipedia. You can tell that's true because all the bands that played in the pubs were of all different styles. There were people like Jilly Willie and the Red Hot Peppers, to give them their full name, were like sort of country rock. You've got Ace, which was like a funky, rocky thing. Paul Carrick, who was the lead singer and the main guy behind it, went off to sing for Mike and the Mechanics, so that gives you like an idea of the style of music. And of course, there's a stripped back R&B of Dr. Feelgood. Who at the time, 1974, were just a support band at the Lord Nelson. Of course, that wouldn't last long. More about Dr. Feelgood later. Then you've got Kilburn and the High Roads, which was Ian Jury's band before he formed Ian Jury and the Blockheads. Bop, I just can't stop. He, he was probably the main guy in that, but it wasn't all him. So you see, that's just five acts from one venue in 1974. There were literally hundreds of acts playing the London pub rock circuit, ranging from, I mean, I can remember seeing gypsy style music, there was Tex-Mex musicians, there was country, there was Irish music, there was literally anything that you can think of people played it. So you couldn't say that pub rock was a genre of music because it was so wide in its scope, it was just mind-blowing. Punk started in the pubs of London, let's not forget that. People like the one one which was Joe Summers band before The Clash, it was like the Grateful Dead cross with Rockabilly, with a bit of Slim Harpo thrown in for good measure. I saw them at the Old Guinea and a few, few more places at the time, and you definitely see there's a spark there. He was the guy. I mean, Joe Strummer, who wasn't called Joe then, he was called something else. And don't believe it baloney in the history about how it started in May 1971 at the Tally Ho Pub when Eggs Over Easy persuaded the landlord of a jazz pub to let them play. Bollocks, absolute bollocks. There was Music in pubs before then, it wasn't all jazz. A lot of the pubs were Irish run. They were like Irish landlords, they had Irish clientele, and they had show bands, for want of a bit better word, or they had Irish traditional music. And Cockney sing-alongs are well documented in pubs. So there's plenty of music already happening in pubs before May 1971. And occasionally the landlord, keen to make a few pounds, would put on a rock band or let his mates in a skiffle band play or a jazz band even, yeah. So it wasn't all the same. And gradually they realized that there were bands you could see. The word spread like wildfire, because don't get back then, there wasn't like the internet or anything. Basically, it was word of mouth. And there were lots of people at the time interested in it was a student thing it was like everybody it seemed who was under the age of probably 40 liked going to watch bands in pubs now they all didn't want to go and watch the same sort of bands some want to watch bluesy bands some want to go and watch punky bands some going to watch avant-garde jazzy bands and you had the lot you basically had the lot i would say i've been to every pub rock venue in london and i've seen Literally, I would say thousands of pub rock bands and bands who played in pubs, which is basically what it was. And who were my top five? It's very hard to say, because this will change on a day-to-day -day basis. Frankly, to be honest with you, what I did for this, I did a Google search, and there were probably, what, 30 or 40 names, and I picked four of them, and then one that came up in no, no search. Can, can you guess what band that was? And here they are in no particular order. Right, number one is Dr. Feelgood. Obviously, you can't talk about pub rock without talking about Dr. Feelgood. They stripped back everything. Oh, 
At the time, don't forget, you could see in the 60s, early 70s, people like John Lee Hooker, Sonny Terry and Brownie McGee, Howling Wolf, um, James Cotton would come over here and they tour the pubs and the clubs and they'd often end up at the 100 Club in London or at a pub. A lot of the bands at the time, the blues bands, were the people who backed these people and they were also people who had seen them and lived in that life and so they played straight blues. Dr Feelgood didn't. They were like hard, rough edge. They were the spirit of rock and roll fused with blues. And that's why they were so excited. That's why they did it so well. And the band was full of personalities. Lee Brillo, Wilco Johnson, the big figure, and to a slightly lesser extent, without being unkind, Sparkle. Right, so who else? Bees make honey. They don't often make it now. Um... Barry Richardson formed Bees Make Honey in 1971 and um, he was one of those guys who was at the Tally Ho uh, involved in playing in the jazz bands up there and by a lot of Irish musicians such as Fran Byrne and Mick Malloy and a lot of them went off to play in pub bands in the later waves such as Juice on the Loose and people like that so it's all very good and they had their roots in Irish show bands and in basically jazz and R&B and they were really good of course, you can't mention pub rock really and the way it turned into punk without mentioning the one winners, which I already have done. They are definitely one of my top five pub rock bands. As are the one that never made it to any list that I saw, Red Beans and Rice. <laughs> Red Beans and Rice was one of the most reliable pub rock bands of the early, well, they lasted practically the whole period of pub rock. And they were led by a guy called Tom Riley, who was the drummer, who sang. Um, they had various lead vocalists at various times. One of their vocalists was a guy called Laverne Brown, who could easily have made it as a big, like, British soul star, but never quite did. And a guy called Geraint Watkins played piano with them who would subsequently move to London and would work with people like Nick Lowe and Juice on the Loose. And there you go, that's um, Red Beans and Rice. My final choice, at least today, for my top five is Nine Below Zero. <laughs> At the time that Nine Zero were playing in pubs in the Oak Kent Road, I was more in West London, uh, Fulham, Putney. But word of Nine Below Zero spread even to um, Putney. And so I went down to the Oak Kent Road one, I think Thursday night, thank God, because Friday nights in the Oak Kent Road, you would not want to go in those days. It was like the Wild West. If you didn't get your head kicked in, you weren't trying very hard. It was mental. So luckily, I think I went down and saw them on a Thursday night. It was still pretty brightest, and the band was so good, it was just unbelievable. They were playing a pub called the um, Thomas Beckett, the Oak Kent Road, and I knew then they were going to be big. And subsequently, I put them on loads of times at the Hunter Club and at places like that. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like it, press the ding dong belly thing, subscribe, and uh, see you next time. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>